Okay, so let's move on to lipids. Now, lipids uh, are groups of molecules that don't dissolve in water, and that's because they're nonpolar molecules, okay? So the first group of lipids are what are known as triglycerides, and this is showing a triglyceride. Triglycerides have a glycerol molecule and three of these things called fatty acids. Now, triglycerides are more commonly known as fats and oils, and this is showing the difference between a fat and oil right here. Fats are solids at room temperature, oils are liquids at room temperature. And here's the difference. So when you look at the fatty acid chain of a fat versus a lipid, or I'm sorry, a, a fat versus an oil, is that an oil will have a double bond in its fatty acid chain. And that's gonna cause this kink. And so think about it this way. So here's my fatty acid chains out there. They can get really close together. Yeah, it's a, a, a fat there. If I have kinks in them, they can't get as close. And that's an oil. And that's literally the difference chemically between a fat and an oil. Now, also we use fats for long-term energy storage with animals, all right? And the reason we use fats over carbohydrates or anything else is it stores a lot more energy. So one gram of a carbohydrate is gonna store four calories of energy. So a calorie is, uh, one calorie is equivalent to the amount of energy it takes to raise one gram of water, one degree Celsius. So calories are units of energy, right? So um, going back to this, so a carbohydrate like uh, uh, glycogen, one gram of it only stores four calories versus a lipid, one gram of that stores nine calories, right? So what this means is, is that I can store more than twice the amount of energy in the same amount of space, okay? So this is why we use uh, fats for long-term energy storage. Other molecules that we get energy from, uh, proteins, we can get, uh, so one gram of a protein is equal to four calories, and then one gram of alcohol is equal to actually to seven calories. All right, let's look at, look at other triglycerides here. I'm sorry, not triglycerides, other uh, lipids. So next are phospholipids. So I mentioned these guys, we're gonna talk about these guys later on a little bit more. But phospholipids are the main component of membranes, okay? And so this is trying to show, uh, you know, so some different structures shown here in the cartoon version. But we'll talk about phospholipids uh, a little more detail later on. Uh, steroids, this is a steroid. Steroids are also a group of lipids. So uh, steroids uh, are hormones like testosterone and estrogen, okay? And what you notice about steroids is they ha all have this four ring structure. If I go to this, it's showing vitamin D right here, or cholesterol here, and this is, uh, can be used to make estrogen, testosterone, bile salts, even vitamin D, all right? So by saying something is a steroid just means it has that four ring structure to it, okay? Now, a lot of times people think, uh, uh, when they hear steroids, they think of anabolic steroids. Now, anabolic steroids have a similar shape to testosterone, so they have similar functions in our body to testosterone. Not all of them, because it's not exactly the same. All right, so that's just something I want you to keep in your head, that a molecule's shape determines its function. Uh, so another group are called waxes, and waxes are used by water, for waterproofing by organisms. All right, let's move on to proteins. Proteins are large molecules composed of amino acids, and they have many functions in the body. So we have enzymatic proteins, which we're gonna talk about here in a little bit, defensive proteins like antibodies, storage proteins like ova albumin, transport proteins, move substances in our body, cross cells, hormonal proteins, contractile and motor proteins, actin and myosin, their main proteins found in muscle, receptor proteins, so they, cause uh, some intercellular response, and then structural proteins like collagen. That's uh, collagen is the white of your eyes, what's also found in tendons and ligaments. It's also found a lot of in your skin and muscles. So anyway, moving on. Proteins are made of amino acids. So amino acids are the monomers of proteins. And there are 20 amino acids, and this is showing all the different amino acids. And what I want you to take away from this is that bottom part is the same on each of these amino acids. So the top part can be different, all right? So a peptide is uh, two or more amino acids that are joined together. And they're joined together by what is known as a peptide bond. So this is showing a peptide here. 
Now, when we have a long chain of amino acids together, that is what is known as a polypeptide. So a protein can be one polypeptide or it can be several polypeptides together. And we'll get to that here in a second. So one important group are, uh, are enzymes. Enzymes are organic catalysts. So what they do is they can increase the rate of chemical reactions without themselves being changed. So here this enzyme is breaking down sucrose into a glucose and a fructose molecule. Okay, so these are a major group of proteins that we have. Okay, and so just about every chemical reaction that occurs in our body is controlled by an enzyme. And if you lack an enzyme for a certain reaction, well, that reaction doesn't take place, right? So I already mentioned earlier, like, uh, you know, we can't break down cellulose because we don't produce an enzyme to break down cellulose. People who are lactose intolerant don't produce an enzyme, lactase, that breaks down that lactose sugar. All right? Now, let's take a look at protein shape. So the first part of a protein shape is its primary structure. And that is just a sequence of amino acids. So one amino acid after the next. You can think of this like, you know, the trains in a car, or I'm sorry, the cars in a train, okay? Next is a secondary structure. So this is a local pattern in the peptide, all right? So you can either have an alpha helix, that's a winding structure, uh, or you could have a pleated sheet. That's where, you know, it's really hard to show this two-dimensionally, but it's gonna go out, then in, then out, then in again, okay? And this is all done by hydrogen bonding that's gonna cause those structures, okay? Next is a tertiary structure, also caused by hydrogen bonding. So one hydrogen atom on one part is attracted to another negatively atom, charge atom on another part. So the tertiary structure, the third structure here, is the overall three-dimensional structure of the polypeptide. Okay, now as I said, a protein could be done here or it could have a quaternary structure. So a quaternary structure is where you have two or more polypeptides are joined together. And so this is shown, this particular protein has four subunits to it, okay? Now, a molecule shape determines its function, all right? So as I already mentioned, that, all right? So a molecule shape determines its function. And so this is showing um, a naturally occurring hormone in us called endorphins. Uh, and this is showing uh, morphine here, all right? So the thing is, is that this part of the endorphin and this part of the morphine molecule are exactly the same. And so they will bind to pain receptors in our brain. And so by binding those pain receptors in our brain cell, they stop that uh, brain cell from interpreting that pain, all right? So, you know, endorphin naturally occurring, oh, like endorphins, like if you, you know, like, you know exercise or something, you're gonna produce some endorphins inhibits pain on you so you can do that exercise, right? So morphine binds to the same receptors, so they have the same function in our body, okay? Now, uh, so this is shown hemoglobin. I don't know why that's there. Uh, so what can we do here is we can denature a protein, and that is to change the shape of the molecule. And if you change the shape of the molecule, it's going to lose its function. So what happens here in denaturing is those hydrogen bonds are broken. So a couple examples here. So, you know, if you've ever cooked an egg on a skillet, when you crack an egg on a skillet, right, is that you see that there's this clear gelatinous stuff and that's called the ovalbumin. But if, after exposure to high heat, what happens to that ovalbumin is that it loses its gelatinous uh, consistency and it, we also see a color change. So it goes from clear to white and it becomes more solid. And that's a denaturing of the protein. All right, so lobsters, before they're cooked, are kind of a, a greenish to bluish brown. After we cook them, they become this nice red color. And that's a denaturing of the proteins found in their exoskeletons. All right, you can also denature things by pH changes. So this is what happens when milk curdles. So all proteins have a pH range in which they uh, are okay in. Outside of that pH range, they'll denature. And so what happens is when uh, you know, you get milk and you have that milk for a while, it's that the bacteria in the milk are going to feed off of that milk. Yes, there's bacteria in milk, all right? You can't sterilize it because uh, then you'll uh, denature the proteins in the milk, right? But what happens here is the bacteria in the milk 
They're going to feed up on the meat. Uh, they're going to feed on the milk, and they're produce lactic acid as a byproduct. Of their feeding action. That lactic acid builds up, and eventually you get outside of the pH range of the uh, of the proteins of the milk, and they'll change shape, and that's what the curdling is. Also, bacteria producing lactic acid that also occurs in your mouth. That's what leads to teeth decay because that lactic acid will eat away at your enamel. This is why we all should brush our teeth. Okay. Other things that can uh, cause denaturing, salt change, uh, salt concentrations can cause this. Alcohol can denature proteins as well. All right, let's move on uh, to nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are large molecules composed of nucleotides. All right, so uh, the first one that we're going to talk about is DNA, uh, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Uh, DNA is our genetic material. It is the instructions to make another you or me or any other organism. All right. Now, um, here is a, a nucleotide. So a nucleotide has three parts. It has a phosphate group, a sugar group, and a nitrogenous base. Now, there are four different nucleotides in DNA. Uh, there is, um, as we can see over here, uh, there's adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. So that nitrogen space is different, all right? All right, uh, and then, uh, so this is shown right here, DNA, DNA is a double-stranded helix, okay? Uh, we'll talk much more about DNA later on this semester. If we look at RNA, uh, this is just showing one type of RNA, uh, but if we go to this picture here, RNA, there are four nucleotides with it, there's adenine, guanine, cytosine, and your cell replaces thymine, okay? RNA is single-stranded, um, so uh, it does not form a helix either. So, all right. The last type of uh, nucleic acid is known as ATP. So ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. So we have adenosine and three phosphates attached to it. So ATP is the energy currency of the cell. So whenever we expend any energy, we're breaking down an ATP and it's gonna release some energy in doing so, all right? So when I told you earlier that glucose is the main molecule our cells use for energy, we break down glucose to make ATP and then we use ATP for that energy and you know whatever that energy is needed for. Moving um, substances across membranes, uh, you know, uh, building molecules, breaking molecules down, movement uh, as well. So ATP is a very important molecule. We'll talk about it more later on this semester.